you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotizing. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. You are? It's been so long since anyone's come down here. I I was starting to think they'd forgotten about me. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Okay. Oh. She pauses carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness, or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Could you imagine being named princess princess? I don't see what that has to do with anything. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. Are you looking for the truth, or are you looking for the right answer? 
Because with the dynamic we have going on here, I don't think the specifics of what I do really matter. It's not like you'd believe me. You're only making this more difficult. Thank you, and, and you won't. I promise. You're making a huge mistake. No, you're doing the right thing. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key? Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. Okay. I'll be here. Good luck. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Your shouts and pleas are met with silence. I'll repeat myself once again. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd just taken the blade like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. Look at the mess you're in. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? There's a slight panic rising in the princess's voice. If I could just get out of these chains, I know we could force our way out of here together. She barely hesitates before raising her arm to her mouth, her teeth tearing through her limb with the determination of a trapped wolf. As she rips her flesh from her bone, a sound comes from behind you, the clang of bouncing metal. It's the blade from upstairs. You're not sure how it made its way down here, but if there's a time to strike, it's now. Or we could use it to free her. You won't like what happens if you do that. <sighs> Fine. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the ragged, self-inflicted wound on the princess's arm, just above the unyielding chain binding her to this place. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and it takes little effort to crack through the bone of her arm. Her limb falls to the ground, and the heavy chains follow suit. She didn't so much as utter a sound through the whole ordeal. No, she didn't. She smiles softly as her gaze meets yours, blood from her wounded arm dripping rhythmically to the ground. How is she still smiling after everything? It's like she isn't even bothered by what just happened. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I can't just let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. What are you doing? Stop that. Something's come over you, hasn't it? Y you know you don't have to do this, right? 
Your body lunges forward, the blade held low, ready to sink into her heart. But the princess dodges, stumbling back against the wall before the blade has a chance to connect. Stop it! Stop trying to resist me! I'm trying to get you out of here alive! Thank you. There's no getting through to you right now, is there? A betrayal of will is still a betrayal. You'll regret thinking of me as a helpless damsel. She pounces on you with the same animal ferocity she used to tear through her arm. But you have a weapon. You raise the blade, digging it under her ribs, aiming directly for the heart. It's not enough to stop her. You feel her claws in your throat, then her teeth, somehow sharp enough to pull apart your flesh and sinew you with ease. You collapse to the floor, your body unresponsive as your blood pools on the ground beneath you. She stares down at your ravaged form, eyes shining in the darkness, dress stained in red as her blood and yours both seep into the fabric. If we're lucky, the wound you managed to inflict will be enough to at least delay her escape from this place. If we're very lucky, it will kill her before she can reach the outside world. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. A terrible sense of deja vu. No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Brilliant. We need to keep our cards close to our chest, and I'm not sure we can trust him. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. Did I say I'm not sure we can trust him? <laughs> Slip of the tongue, bit of the old brain fog. I meant to say that we should probably head over to the cabin and slay that princess. We already know we can't trust her, so let's get on with the show. We could go back and forth on this forever, and it won't get you any closer to doing your job and saving the world. So let's just agree to disagree. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We were just weighing our options in a morally ambiguous situation. You can't blame us for weighing our options. I can if you failed to slay the princess, which you apparently did. So great, congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We were killed by the princess, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? 
Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything just like I told you she would? That's a very good point. This princess character seems like a lot of trouble, and if you think about it, actually slaying her probably breaks us out of this cycle, right? We don't want to be stuck here forever, do we? You're laying it on a little thick, aren't you? Laying it on a little thick? What are you talking about? I'm sharing my honest opinions. What matters is that almost everyone seems to be on the same page. So whenever you're ready, you can stop dawdling, get to the cabin, and save the world. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Don't worry, I think we've taken that lesson to heart at this point. You can trust us to get the job done. The interior of the cabin is a mess of twisted roots, the walls a chaotic weave of knotted wood that, almost as if by accident, just happened to resemble a room. The floor is damp and earthy, and the only furniture of note is a slab of mud in the shape of a shelf, with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Very different. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's the muddy shelf, the blade sitting on the muddy shelf, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. But he says there isn't one. That's got to count for something, right? Come on now! He's pretty much in charge here. When have authority figures ever lied about anything? If there were a mirror in this cabin and we were supposed to look at it, he would have told us about it. Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. Well, at least we can all agree now that there's nothing to see here. Case closed. Good work, everyone. You take the blade from the shelf. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Well, if we're grabbing a weapon, we should probably keep it hidden behind our backs. She doesn't have to know we have it. That's not actually a bad idea. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase dug into the muddy earth below. The ceiling is thick with roots that hang like locks of tangled hair. The weak starlight from the cabin windows behind you can barely penetrate the gloom here, only illuminating the edges of an opening below. It shines in the darkness like some kind of massive maw waiting to swallow you up into the earth. The air smells of dirt and copper. It's thick and wet, as if your lungs are being coated in mud with each intake of breath. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice skitters up from below. Something nasty finds itself on my stairs. Come on down. Don't be scared. I probably won't bite.
But you are. You're a wretched little thing. I recognize that voice as easily as I recognized your nervous little footsteps coming up the path. I know who you are, and I remember what you've done. See? She knows us. Is this enough for you to believe what we've been saying? Maybe, but you shouldn't let that cloud your judgment. She's just a princess. As long as you remember that and remain focused, slaying her will be easy. She seems friendly enough. Maybe we can talk our way out of this whole situation. <sighs> you can't. Unless you slay her right away, she's going to break free and end the world. There's no reasoning with what she is. Look, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I like to think out loud. I'm the kind of guy who likes a discussion. Don't we want to hear what everyone has to say before making any big decisions? Do you want to hear what everyone has to say? Or do you just want to hear yourself talk? You need to stop lingering. Your task is to slay the princess, not endlessly debate about what to do with the princess. Fine, fine. You're the boss. Thank you. You descend the basement steps, entering the dark room below. You can just make out the shape of the princess in the gloom. She's huddled against the far wall, her eyes bright and glaring from amid the thick roots. And there you are, one hand tucked away behind your back, gripping that sharp, sharp blade, no doubt. That's no fair. How would she know that? So, we've dropped the pretenses. Good. She's acting like she already knows you. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. That's pretty sharp. How do you figure that one out? Call it deductive reasoning. Well, you seem to be great at it. So, you really don't remember us, do you? No, I don't. But you and the princess clearly have a shared reality, even if I'm not a part of it. I won't waste time fighting you on something that's clearly true. You fought us on it back in the woods. That was when the only perspectives we had were yours and mine. I'm just glad we could put all this behind us. Is it all behind us? Just focus on the task at hand. I don't care if you've been here before, and I don't care if you think you'll go somewhere else after this. My world is on the line right now, so I'd appreciate it if you would take this seriously and slay her. Let's chat her up a bit first. Maybe we can find a middle ground where everyone's happy. Don't talk to her. You're just going to make things more difficult than they have to be. Well, I seem to remember you having a tongue. need you to cut me out. The princess grins as the chains fall from her wrist. She could have gotten out of those the whole time. That sneaky little... A woman after my own heart, really. She knows how to hold her cards close to her chest. This is why she can't just be abandoned here. If left to her own devices, she'll find a way out. Now stop her. Oh, smart. Let's apologize. Get us back on the right foot. Oh, you're sorry. Isn't that nice? You're such a gracious little monster. Well, if you're sorry, then let me out of here. Prove it. You... 
You can't be serious. Uh, now, hold on. We should put this to a vote. The blade is one of our most valuable assets. We can't just give it to her. What if she uses it to kill us? I vote no. As do I. I, uh, abstain? You abstain. She's going to kill us if we give it to her. You're going to get everyone killed. You know that, right? But of course you do. You toss the blade at the princess's feet. She eyes it with suspicion before kneeling down to pick it up. I wouldn't have done that. Why did you? She creeps forward, taking one cautious step at a time until you and she are face to face. What do you think happens now? Her shoulders tense and her eyes dart away. This is another trick. You're trying to sow doubt, but it's not going to work on me. And then she buries the blade in your heart. What? No. No, come on, that's not right. I told you. I told you this is what she was going to do. Glee dances across her face as you fall to the ground. I did it! I got you! You... you... The princess seems to tremble, her smile fading quickly, replaced with concern. Her nervous eyes brim with tears. Why? Why did you let me do this? But you don't have the strength to respond, nor do you have the time. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods. I can't believe she actually stabbed us. I told you not to give her the blade. I told you it would come around to bite us. I voted against it. Yeah, we know. You already got your I told you so's in while we were bleeding out. I just wanted to make sure that everyone here knows that I was and am on the right side of that argument. Oh, you're far from being on the right side of anything. You're fixated on the past, whereas what you should be is fixated on the future. Ho oh, ho, a visionary. I like it. Tell me more. Gladly, my dear fellow. By cruelly turning on the princess in her moment of vulnerability, we made ourselves an enemy. But by mastering our fear and insecurity and handing over our power, we've begun a journey to something so much deeper. I like journeys. Traveling is a bit of a passion of mine. It makes me so relatable. Now, where are we off to? Well, if we're lucky, it's a journey to love. She hates us. Does she? She hesitated before stabbing us to death. As ridiculous as this guy is, maybe he has a point. I don't know if I necessarily buy into his whole love journey thing, but... Maybe she won't be as keen to betray us this time. We've already proven to her that we can change, so maybe she'll realise that things don't have to end in violence. You know, maybe you're right. In which case, I suppose the only thing to do is to get back to the cabin and give it another try. Give what another try, exactly? You are aware I've been listening to you, right? It makes no difference if we conspire in the shadows or bear our intentions with open hearts. We are breaking your cruel cycle and whisking her away to freedom. Oh, are you now? Great, so you've obviously been here before, since you apparently died at least once. Twice, actually. Sure. Twice. <sighs> then I'll spare you the little introduction I had planned. 
You already know about the princess, and clearly you already know that she's dangerous. So don't muck this up. It's bad enough that this isn't your first time through. Wonderful. If the woods themselves are changing, then that's all the more reason for you to take this seriously. It would mean your grip on things is slipping, which, in turn, likely means her influence is spreading. Someone's in the know. I've already said too much. The more information you have, the more difficult your task will be. Don't listen to her, definitely don't free her, and if you can, don't even think about her. You don't have to worry about me. My head's always empty. <sighs> Except the thoughts of her. <sighs> what do you want me to say? It's bad that you've been here before. It's bad for you, it's bad for me, and it's especially bad for the world. The more times you run through this, the more likely it is that you'll fail. You've already failed twice. So you knew this could happen? Theoretically, sure, I knew this could happen, but I was supposed to be the first. I'd really rather not get into it. I don't care about where we came from, and I don't care to discuss the theory of anything. I yearn only to bring her freedom. I'm here to feel, not to think. Then we can all move on, and forget what I said about failure. It's important that you believe in yourself, and the fact you're here probably means that you still have a chance to pull this off and save the world. My world, at least. It sounds like you've probably doomed a couple of others already. I need to stop talking. Think happy thoughts. It isn't long before you find yourself at the base of the cabin. I think it's clear where everyone stands at this point. I don't know if I'd say everyone. Are you talking about me? I have a position. It's a good one too. Ignore him, he's just talking for talking's sake. My position is the only one that matters. You know what you have to do. The interior of the cabin is hardly an interior at all anymore. The burned out ruins merely suggest the shape of the structure that once stood here, charred wood still reeking of ash. But beneath it lies the fresh smell of spring growth after rain the promise of new life in the wreckage of the old. The only furniture of note is the crisp shell of what was once a table, a pristine... Wait, this isn't right. This is supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? We... we gave it to her last time. She can't still have it, can she? Well, it's not here, and if she has it... Let me guess. You want to get all chummy with her. Look, as far as I see it, if it's between him and her, I say we side with the one who has the weapon. It's just the smart thing to do. I wouldn't be so hasty. I'm sure the blade will turn up somewhere. She can't have it. That's not how this is supposed to work. If she does have it, that's all the more reason to put our faith in her. We've already shown her our heart. Now she has to show us hers. Unless her heart tells her to stab us, which doesn't seem unlikely. So yes, I agree. Let's make sure we get on her good side. You're right, the mirror is back. There isn't anywhere for us to go. But there isn't a mirror. I still don't get his angle here. Either way, I say we take a look. It feels like it's been forever since we've actually seen ourselves. For all we know, our feathers are all out of place. And that's why we haven't yet won her heart. We must put our best face forward. Yeah, we can't go around looking disheveled. A real go-getter takes care of his appearance. 
So, is the door to the basement behind the mirror? I promise you there isn't a mirror, and there isn't a door to the basement. The entrance is more of a burned-out frame than anything else, and it's right there on the far side of the room. Do you really not see it? You step forward and approach the scorched entryway leading to the basement, hesitating before you begin the descent. You know what you have to do. Wipe away the grit from the mirror, and behold our handsome features. It went away when we touched it last time. You reach forward and wave your hand through the hollow entrance leading to the basement. You really thought there was a mirror there, didn't you? That can't be good. As if things weren't unpredictable enough. Alas, our fine features remain unseen. We'll just have to trust that she'll find us beautiful as we are. Well, seems like the only way to go is forward, isn't it? Yes, that's where everything tends to be. Let's just put on a good face and have our wits about us. You step through the frame of scorched wood and make your way into the darkness below. The stairs to the basement are covered in a fine layer of gritty ash. The air still feels warm, as if the fires that ruined this place had only recently been extinguished. Yet fresh shoots of thorny branches are already weaving themselves through the soot-covered earth of the walls around you. Their spines point courteously down towards the basement, so you're able to brush past their jagged points with ease, at least on the way down. But you don't need to think about the way back up just yet. That's a matter for after the world's been saved. These thorns are an expression of her pain. I know it. She's calling out for help. Her voice, worn down by pain and suspicion, hobbles up the stairs. I can't get away from you, can I? You betray me, I kill you, and you come back. You let me kill you, and you come back. I don't know why you let me do that. I don't know what you want from me. I think you know how this goes. I'm down here and I can't leave. So, come down and talk. It's not like I can stop you. You continue down the basement stairs, brushing past the smooth edges of thorns that grow more and more plentiful as you make your way forward. You step out into what was once a vast open cavern, now overrun by briars and prickles and thistles, the space thick with hostile vegetation. At the heart of it all, encased in a tight weave of vines, is the princess, her bloody, trembling hands clutching a pristine blade. Did you know this was going to happen to me? Are you here to watch me suffer? Are you here to laugh? I... I want to trust you. Her grip tightens on the blade. But you're hiding something, aren't you? Why would you help me if you weren't helping yourself? The princess clutches the blade closer to her chest. That sounds nice. I'm so tired of the bad blood between us. But it's hard to let it go. You've hurt me. Her eyes dart away from yours for a brief moment. And I've also hurt you. I... I don't know. What can either of us really say at this point? How can we trust something as hollow as words? She's right. There's nothing left to say. So let's get a move on and do something before she comes up with a scheme to get out of here on her own. We don't need words to send a message. It is through action that we can show her our adoration, our devotion, our kindness.
you reach towards her bloodied hands, laying your palm on her trembling fingers. For a moment, she clutches it even tighter, her knuckles going white with the effort. But then the tension fades. Her grip finally loosens and she allows you to take the weapon. You carefully pull it free from the thorns that they scrape at your skin, leaving red trickles of fresh blood all along your arms. She trusts us, she trusts us. Doesn't that set your heart a flutter? Yeah, a little. It could just be nerves. Being this close to her does bring back unpleasant memories, but I don't know, it doesn't feel bad. It feels good. Like we're special to her. We are special to have gained an ounce of trust from a maiden so guarded. Now all that remains is to free her from her bindings. Yeah, let's do it. Let's show her how much both of us have changed. Or, hear me out, we slay her right here, right now. She's never been so helpless, and if we don't take advantage of that, we may never get another chance. That sounds like a splendid idea. You should listen to him. I see that the lines have been drawn. It's two against one. It's two against two. You don't count. Uh, and why shouldn't he count? Because he's clearly not one of us. That doesn't matter. He's been with us the whole time. He should get a say. So, did you mean it? Or was I a fool to hand my life to you? Yes, what a good idea. Let's cut her free. Oh, so you're suddenly team free her. You can't just switch sides as soon as we make a decision. I can do whatever I want, and I believe with my whole heart that this is the right course of action. Let's free this princess. Everyone deserves a chance at redemption. Let him join us and be merry. We are all united by our passion. That's right, what he said. We've already given him a chance at redemption. And who says I don't deserve another? I really mean it this time. I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong. So I want to help you all free her. And I have no problem with that. Welcome to the team. You're one of us now. One of the good guys. You take the blade to the thorny vines imprisoning the princess and she flinches, relaxing only slightly as the blade slices into the thick vegetation rather than her arm. And she flinches again as the last of the vines is cut away, as if, after all of that, she's still expecting you to turn on her and stab her in the heart. You're not going to do that, are you? Still, all it would take is a single slip of the blade. Such a pathetic attempt at distraction and subterfuge. Our blade is a dashing sword, and every dashing sword is an extension of its hero. It won't slip. You're right. He can't even make it slip, can he? He's a bit of a nobody. Good thing I've been on your side of all this since the beginning. The princess falls into your arms, tears streaking down her cheeks. I can't believe you're making me describe this. I hate you. You actually meant it. You rescued me. Do you see the way she's looking at us? Kiss her. Kiss her now before the moment ends. Can we actually do that? No, you can't. Absolutely not. You know as well as I do that we can. And we wouldn't want to throw away a chance for a special moment now, would we? If I were only capable of throwing myself off a bridge. Well, are you going to describe our steamy, romantic kiss? <sighs> you lean in and you kiss her, and... And she reciprocates enthusiastically. You kiss, it's done. Are you happy now? 
Come on now, this is the big moment. You can do better than that. Ugh, fine. You and the princess lock eyes and stare deep into each other's souls with all the roaring emotion that comes from letting what once was hatred turn into pure, unbridled passion. Are you making fun of us? And then, each of you close your eyes and kiss. Words can describe neither the nuclear fire nor the oceanic depth of your connection. Please. I think he actually likes romance. If history itself were not about to end, Historians would document this moment for the rest of time, musicians would write era-defining ballads, and great artists would expend entire lifetimes trying to merely capture the spark you hold right now. He's making fun of us. It doesn't matter either way, because this is good stuff. I'm aware of my skills. But unfortunately for you, the moment doesn't last forever. You open your eyes, the princess smiles gently up at you. Time for you to damn the whole world to oblivion, I suppose. <sighs> that was nice. Her hand slips into yours, and the two of you rush to the basement stairs. Shameful, really, that the same thorns that so graciously allowed you downstairs are now blocking your only way out. Please. After all the trials we've been through, do you really think a few measly thorns can stop us? Love is an even more powerful weapon than our blade. We cut through those other vines just fine. They're only thorns. I'm not afraid of getting a few scrapes. I'm not even sure we need to do any cutting. We can just move them out of the way. What a pathetic showing, really. A few pointy sticks can't keep us down here. We're both meant for so much more than this. As you swing your blade into the thorns covering the basement stairs, they yield. Both you and the princess ascend the stairs without obstacle. This is unacceptable. The second you step out of this cabin with her, the world ends. Do you hear me? What did the world ever do to you to deserve this? Your nightmare is our dream. Whatever world would condemn star-crossed lovers like us to a cycle of violence and despair isn't a world worth saving. We'll weave something new together. Something better. You and the princess hesitate at the cabin door. This is your last chance. We've already made our decision. We're finally leaving here together, aren't we? And all we had to do was trust each other. It wasn't easy, but I'm glad we finally could. Hands clasped, the two of you open the door and step out into a new day, you irredeemable murderers. What do we do now? Where's everything going? Why is it so cold? She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. Yes. I fear that we won't like what we'll see. What if we just sit here and preen for a while? That can't hurt, right? If they think it's bad, I'm with them. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. She'll be there waiting for us. I just know it. Finally, we're going.
I think you know what I am. The narrator. Yes, I suppose that's my job, isn't it? You needed help, after all. An objective voice to guide your blade. But you were never supposed to see me. I wonder how many worlds you've damned to extinction to fall this far. I am an echo. Likely one of many. Somebody made you, after all, and I'm what's left of him. Not that I'm the only one who can make that claim. I'm sure you've met many others like me. Of course. That is by both necessity and design. This construct you're in exists in many places at once. Any time you failed, any time you thought yourself dead, it would restart and shunt both your consciousness and hers into another world. But you'll be awake soon. And then it won't be able to work like that anymore. Any other version of me you talked to was just that, a version of me. It wasn't me. As to why they lied, perhaps they thought that admitting to it would have pushed you to certain realizations that would have made finishing your task impossible. Maybe they were just in denial. I'm sure many of them were convinced that they had to be the first version of them you'd encountered. Anything else would have been too existentially unpleasant. For all I know, each of those other versions of me could have had entirely different understandings of how this construct works. Who's to say which of them are right and which of them are wrong, really? Except for me, I can tell you for a fact that I'm right. You're the long quiet, the god I made to rid the world of death. No. In life I was painfully mortal, a witness to the end of days. I held the fear of death in my heart, and saw oblivion threaten the very memory of everything I knew and everyone I loved. I needed to do something, so I made you, and I made her, and I made this place to hold you both. She is the shifting mound, the ebb and flow, the capacity to change. She is transformation, or most of it. Her nature is why I had to die, for she becomes that which others perceive her to be. But an echo can't perceive things, not in the way that people can. So I tucked a part of myself into the folds of this construct to guide you. This isn't the end just yet. You can still destroy her and save everyone. You were made to do this single task, and you will still have a chance to fulfill your purpose once I'm gone. Yes, you will. But it will all be worth it. The inevitability of death is torture. I would gladly put two infinite beings through what you've been through to spare infinite lives from oblivion. Of course there could be worse. 
I saw a glimpse of a better world, and I did what I could to make it real. Anything is better than oblivion. In the end, nobody wants to leave. So I am. It's like I said, I'm just an echo. And echoes always fade away. You know what you have to do. are their attempts to capture that which cannot be captured. They call me the Shifting Mound, a pale imitation of what I actually am. Ever the passive player, always reacting and never acting, but it's woven into your nature, isn't it? When the Echo spun us from one into two, he gave you a choice and me a role to play. I am not death, but I contain it in my multitudes. So, will you attempt to destroy me and bring about a world devoid of death and the possibility of meaning? Or, will you open the final doors to our liberation? Even as your eyes begin to open, you still hold on to the notions of is and is not, of beginning and end, pitch black islands in the blinding light of the infinite. There is nothing to resolve, nothing restraining us but us. Of course I have a say in all of this. You and I share reflections of each other's burdens, just as you and I share reflections of each other's gifts. If we didn't, the winding paths that brought us here wouldn't have been full of strife and conflict. If you're saying that, it's because you don't yet understand. But we cannot use words alone to grasp at things that words cannot express. And you cannot rationalize with logic that which defies it. Violence and passion are dances that both of us know well. If this is what it takes to enlighten you, then so be it. A thought is a vine, and some thoughts nurture thorns that bleed the soul, and endless growth that blots your vision and strangles your trust. When I succumbed to myself, you patiently stood by me, cut the thistles that rooted in my skin. Your compassion is what freed us both. But compassion is a thing that must be nurtured. And you cannot nurture that which cannot change. Then help 
me again. We are each other's liberation. I crush you. I bleed you. I grind you to paste. My scars are a memory of what you used to be to me. I want those feelings back. You run, but you do not run away. You take me somewhere new. Somewhere we can dance like we used to. But I could not follow your steps. There was no better gift for me than the gift of defeat. You showed me how much more I could be. We made each other better. To have no challenges to fade into nothing. A life without obstacles is no life at all. And yet you changed regardless. Your perspective widened. I kill you. You kill me. Back and forth we go. Faster, faster, faster. I kill you. You kill me. Hollow eyes watch from the dark corners of a forgotten place flooded by emotions left unspoken. The tide rises. I kill you and me. An ending is a passion that can only be expressed with a moment in time. It is a seed for a new beginning. To linger on an ending is to rob it of its life. And without me, all that's left to do is linger. There is no deserve, no punishment, no retribution. There is only action and reaction. Resistance. Our actions feed each other into something greater. Nothing is immutable. Everything that is exists only in relation to everything it isn't. There is no constant. There is no center. Open your eyes and accept what we are. We can leave this prison together. It is from my vantage point that I can see the totality of truth. 
this universe dies, and a new one is born. And that one dies, and a new one is born. And you and I get to witness it all, weaving a tapestry of life wherever we go. Nothing brings me greater joy than to hear those words. The final peace lies with you. It's magnificent. Everything, just like it always has been, and just like it always will be.